Well, here we are on the last section of the last chapter for the last moment in this AP Calculus course. Exciting times. So for this section, we are going to talk how to use our calculus skills to be able to find the volume of solids. Okay? Now, there will actually be a variety of types of solids. The first solid that we're going to look at is going to be a solid with a known cross-section. So this will be type 1. And this is what the lesson for today will be looking at. So you can see here we have a solid that's been placed on the x and y axis. Now I have to warn you before we start this lesson, my 3D drawing skills are very minimum. Okay? And you see the solid. Now you'll notice drawn within here is a cross section. Okay? So for today what we are going to do is we will be given a cross section and then we will find the area, the volume of that cross section and integrate it from a lower to upper limit. So more on that in a little bit, but let me give you a foreshadowing of what's to come in the other types of volumes. Now I know that's a little overwhelming, so let's take this one at a time. So we are going to find the volumes of solids that are formed by revolving a region around a horizontal or vertical line. Okay, so the last type was a volume with a known cross section. This is what it might look like. Now this is called the disk method, where we have a given rectangle. Now we might call that a cross section. Sometimes it's also called a disk. And then you can see here, we take this disk and we rotate it. And then we repeat that rotation an infinite number of times to find the volume then of this solid. Disk method. Another method of finding a volume of a solid that is revolved around a vertical line or a horizontal line is called the washer method, where we start with a region formed by two functions. So for example, here's my region. We rotate that around a vertical or horizontal line, and then we find the volume of that solid. And then the third method we will use to find the volume of solids of revolution will be called the shell method. So you can see we've got a lot to cover, heavy content in this one section. But let's get back to our solid where we are given a cross section. So here are three pictures that I googled on the internet that just demonstrate how some solids have known cross sections. Loaf of bread. You can see we have a cross section with a slice of bread. You can see this building here has definite cross sections. A stack of coins definitely has cross sections of an individual coin. So we could find the volume of this stack by finding the volume of one coin and then integrating it. If we place it on an x and y axis, we can integrate it from a lower to upper limit. Same with the building, same with the loaf of bread. Okay. So for this type of solid, you will be given a region and it will be defined by some function. Generally that region will form the base of your solid. You'll graph the region on the x and y axis and then you're going to build upon that region. In class tomorrow we'll look at some great visuals that illustrate this. But for now let's take a look at some illustrations that are already done for us since this is not my strength. How do we find the volume of a solid? Okay, with similarly shaped cross sections. So you can see here we have a solid and you can see that our cross section is a semicircle. So we place it on the x and y axis so we can establish an upper and lower limit we would find the volume of one of those cross sections and then it looks like we're integrating from a lower limit of negative one to an upper limit of one. Or maybe our, our solid has cross sections that are squares. So we find the volume of one square, we integrate it from negative one to one, and we get the volume of the three-dimensional figure. Another common shape used, of course, is a triangle. So anything that we can use our geometry for will help us. So then again, we'll find the volume of the one slice, integrate it from the lower to upper limit to find the total volume of our solid. Now looking at the book's definition so we can learn to read this type of academic text, we see that the definition of a solid with a known cross section, we would look at the area Okay, so the area of the face, the area of the face of the familiar cross section, and we go from the lower to the upper limit after place on an x and y axis. So the volume would be the low integral of the lower to the upper limit, take the area 
of the face, and we know to find volume. You go like a cylinder, you take the area of the base, and then you multiply it by the height or the thickness of each slice. This will again give our volume of our solid. Okay, so basically you're going to repeat four steps for these types of problems. Make sure you have these four steps written down. You're going to, number one, you will first sketch the solid and a typical cross-section. Okay, so many typical cross-sections are going to be squares. We're going to look at semicircles, and we'll also see quite a few triangles, okay? Once you've determined your cross-section, then you will use the formula for area and calculate the area of your cross-section. Now you'll determine the limits of the integration. So place down an x and y axis. You will need to find the lower to the upper limit. And then you're going to integrate the area of that cross-section in respect to x, or sometimes respect to y, and that will result in the volume of your solid. So let's look at an example. Let's start with an example that's drawn for us, because sometimes the drawing can be kind of crazy. So we have a solid here. You can probably see the solid being formed by my semicircles, and we are told that its base is the shape of the region between the x-axis and the arc of the curve y equals 2 sine x. So we can see here, here's the arc of y equals 2 sine x, and here is the x-axis. This forms the base of my region, okay? Now, upon this base, we are going to build semicircles. So you can see here, then, I take the diameter of a semicircle, and I build upon it. A diameter of semicircle, build upon it, okay? Now, you, in order to get the most accurate volume, remember how we talked about with Riemann sums, you would want this number of cross-sections to approach infinity. So as I draw these in, can you see this solid forming, okay? So you can see it's built on this base, but then it rises above it. So now we have to find the volume of the solid. So we've drawn the region, we've identified this area to be a semicircle. Well, we know that the area of a semicircle is one half pi r squared, okay? So the radius here, we're actually looking at diameter, so we know that radius is half of diameter, so it's going to be half of the diameter. And the diameter here is the upper function minus the lower function. Right? Remember that? Well, the upper function is 2 minus sine of x. And the lower function is just when y equals 0. So that's not too hard to subtract anything minus 0. It's just itself. So then it's 2 sine of x. Okay? And then that quantity will be squared. So I end up with 1 half pi sine of x squared. This is the area of the semicircle. So we're going to integrate from the lower limit to the upper limit, from 0 to pi. Now I notice I have a constant here. So just to make it a little simpler, remember with integrals we can write the constant in the front, 1 half pi, and then it's sine of x squared in respect to x. And we would use our calculator then to find this value. So I believe I have the answer on the next slide. So we've got, yes, this is what we got, 1 half pi sine of x squared. We took the integral from 0 to pi. It's a little foggy there. And we end up with pi times this value, which we can see that 1.57. That looks like pi half, huh? So our final answer, the volume, is pi squared over 4. Okay, let's try another example. So now the diagram is not drawn for us. We have a base of a solid is the region in the first quadrant, okay, that's important, enclosed by the parabola y equals 4x squared. So, um, and the line, x equals 1, and the x-axis. So first step is let's draw this base, okay? So we know it's going to be in the first quadrant, and we know we're looking at the parabola y equals 4x squared, okay, so, um, and x equals 1. So let's say x equals 1 is here, and so x equals 1, and when x is 1 in this function, y equals 4 times 1 squared, so the y value will be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so here's the parabola. Okay, and so then we've identified the base. So we're going from a lower um, value of 0 to an upper value of 1. Okay, 0 to 1. Now the shape that we're using, what are we building? 
we are going to be building each plane section of the solid perpendicular to x-axis is a square. Good to know. Okay, so the area is a square. So we know the area formula to be of a square is just it's base squared, okay? So for this example, then, it would be the function 4x squared squared. So it's 4x squared squared, which would be 16x to the fourth, okay? And so we're going from 0 to 1 of 16x to the fourth dx. Now, if I wanted to make it easier, I could bring the 16 out, integrate from 0 to 1 of x to the fourth dx, so now I'm going to find the antiderivative and evaluate it, 1 fifth, x to the fifth, and evaluate from 1 to 0. So we can see then we're going to get 16 fifths would be the volume, so units cubed, of this solid. Great. How are you feeling? I hope good. Now the next one. So again, we're going to draw the region first, identify the area, and integrate. So we have a base of a solid is in the region in the first quadrant, bounded by the x-axis, okay, the y-axis, and the line x plus 2y equals 8. So let's draw that region first. For me, sometimes it helps to write it in um, slope-intercept form. So I have x plus 2y equals 8. I have 2y equals negative x plus 8. So y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. Okay, now let's draw that then. So it's first quadrant, x and y axis, okay? And so let me switch colors. So we're going to go one. Now you should be drawing and writing, copying down all of these examples, right? Of course, Ms. Kleiber. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so we go down one, over two. Down one, over two. Down one, over two. Down one, over two. Okay, so here is my line. Okay, and then we can see then this is the base. So this will be the base. And upon this, we are going to build semicircles, okay? So kind of like the example before, we're going to have semicircles built upon this. So we know then the area formula for a semicircle is pi 1 half, sorry, pi r squared. And this example then, the radius, 1 half pi. We're given the diameter. So we know radius is half of diameter. And we are using the function um, negative one half x plus four. Okay, negative one half x plus four. Okay, so let's simplify this a little bit. Seems like I'm running out of room. I've squished myself into a corner. So let's give myself a little more space here to simplify. So I'm going to end up with one half pi, and then we basically have um, one half times a negative one-half x plus four, and then that quantity is squared. So one-half pi, and then we're going to end up here with two minus one-fourth x squared. Okay? So we're going to take the integral, and we can see from our diagram, lower is zero, upper is eight, so from zero to eight. And I'm going to bring the one-half pi out front here, and then it's going to be... 2 minus 1 fourth x squared, and then it's dx, okay? Now we can see my choices here, multiple choice are all decimal format, so I'm going to use my calculator to find the answer, and in doing that, you should find that the answer is 16.755. Okay, you should be feeling more comfortable now, okay? We're getting close to the end here. I believe we only have one more example to do. So now we have a base of a solid, again, is in the first quadrant, Enclosed by the graph of y equals 2 minus x squared and the coordinate axis. Okay, so let's make a sketch of the region. So we know that's a parabola, okay? And it's 2 minus x squared, so we know it's shifted up 2, and it's going to open down. So we know we have a vertex there. Um, if I place 1 in, 2 minus 1 is 1. And then if we have 2, oh wait, 2 minus 1 squared is 1, yes. And then the next value, oh, so... At 2, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Okay. So it's something like this, right? Okay. Now, we have to be able to build upon this if every cross-section of the solid perpendic ooh, perpendicular to the y-axis this time. Notice how that is different. So everything is going to be in terms of y, and we're going to build squares. Okay? So for this example, then, 
Now again, I'm sorry, my drawing skills are really bad. But if I'm building squares upon this, it's going to look something like this. Okay? Hopefully you can visualize what's going on here. Now remember, when we go with respect to y, we're going to look at the y values of the coordinates. Well, we can see here we have 0, 2, right? And we notice here then the y value is going to be 0, right? That makes it nice. Now, the x value is not quite as clear. We could use our calculator and graph that and calculate the 0. Or we could set actually y, minus, y equals 2 minus x squared. And we could set the y value to 0. And we could solve for x to find the x-ordered pair. Okay, so but since everything does have to be in terms of y, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2, but my function, y is 2 minus x squared, so I have to rewrite that because it has to be in terms of y. So y equals 2 minus x squared, so let's solve for x, subtract 2, y minus 2 equals negative x squared, divide by a negative, 2 minus y equals x squared, so we're looking at the square root of 2 minus y is equal to x. So we're going to integrate the function, the square root of 2 minus y. Now it's squares, so then the area of a square is the base squared, okay, and it's in respect to y. See how this works out so well to be in terms of y? Because when we square a square root, we just end up with 2 minus y in respect to y. Perfect. And now we look over to the right for a multiple choice, and we can see that is the setup of this problem. There you go. Make sure you have all the examples copied down and the steps copied down too.